Gentlemen, this new Vayne top lane build is taking over high elo in Korea. It's losing LS's mind. You can see in this clip, him and Dratu talking. Listen to this. Riffmaker, what? I don't what? fucking know. Look at him lose his mind about the Riffmaker. This build, gentlemen, top lane. It takes a little bit to scale, but once you start popping off, it does make a lot of sense. Let's jump onto the Rift and break it down. As you can see in this diagram, Riftmaker Vein, also known as Lawn Mower Vein. Essentially, guys, you go, um, of course, you're going to be going Titanic Hydra. It gives you on hit. Um, plus, it gives you this insane wave clear angle, as you'll see in the game. Then you can pivot into things like the Rage Blade, Wits End. Riftmaker is the core late game. You buy all your on hits, your wave clear, your tanking this, then you get Riftmaker late game. Boom. You turn on, you start getting that damage amplification, the Omni Vamp on true damage. At maximum strength, the bonus true damage is dealt as true damage on the, the Rift Maker. There's a lot of crazy things going on. There's too many things for my tiny little brain to follow with this Lawn Mower vein. Read all the type of stuff. We're going to jump on the Rift, break down the guy who started this on EU West, and see what the hell the hype's all about. Today's video is sponsored by Zar, a community-based desktop app that's going to be giving every League of Legends player a coach that helps them to improve in every single aspect of the game. Zara is the first league app that helps guide players in-game based on what's happening through its own light and customizable overlay. Zara provides in-game features with a dynamic item recommender that tells you where to place your wards on your minimap, the balance of power during laning phase, performance tracker, timers for the jungle, and even more. Sometimes you forget what you should be doing to get better, but with the real-time coaching tips in context right when you play, you don't need to worry about that anymore. All of that in a light and customizable overlay. You can easily drag and drop, resize and change the opacity of all widgets, as well as disable any widgets you don't want. Now the convenience of having the draft sidebar right next to pick and bans is so, so helpful. You're gonna be getting, of course, pick and ban advice, common runes, situational rune and spells based on team compositions. Now guys, more than 15 million games have been played by over 100,000 players with Zar in the last 10 months. They also have over 200 community virtual coaches with five macro guides. There are plenty of guides written by pros like Shock. Now what's your next move? Make sure to download Zar today and give it a try in the description down below. Okay, jumping onto the Rift, gentlemen. Now this build is only for the 1v9ers. If you are, let's say, an Annie player, a Ramus player, the Baos FFS, don't play this champion. This Riftmaker Vein, some people have been calling it Lawn Mower Vein because you can just completely run over the top of your opponents in the later stages of the game. Essentially, it's a normal Vein build, but you don't go for things like the Shield Bow. You wait because you can get away with um, aggressive itemization on legendaries in the early game, transition into the Riftmaker in the late game, which is going to be giving you extra damage up to, I think, 9% extra damage, and then it converts all damage to true damage. Plus, you're getting Omni Vamp. And Omnivamp converts from the true damage from the vein you're getting. And essentially, you have Titanic Hydra. And you just have to see it to understand what the hell is going on. Because once you hit three to four items, you're going to have a boatload of fun. Now, don't get it twisted. A lot of you players are probably never going to hit four item vein in your entire life. You're probably going to grief your lane away. Um, you're going to die. Your team's going to flame you. you get, they're going to FF at 15 and there's not much you can do about it. So please be aware, don't ruin solo queue. Um, yes, you can play Vayne bot with this build. Yes, you can play Vayne mid with this build. Vayne top is probably one of the best picks for Vayne. Um, essentially, you're getting solo XP, solo gold. You're up in a f literally the longest lane in the game. And he's up against a Riven here, which I can't think of a better matchup to play into. Rune page, bottom left, lethal tempo, no brainer. You want some extra attack range on this Lawnmower Vayne. Very key. Don't go for something like the Conqueror. Don't go PTA. Secondaries, conditioning, overgrowth. This is just pure scaling. The best secondary scaling rooms you can pretty much go. Um, as we might even look for a dive up on the Riven top. I think this is actually exceptionally good in the meta right now, by the way, because you guys know how much things like Maokai, Sedge, Hecarim. We're seeing so many of these tanky champions that can be kited. So if you do have the hands, boys... Oh my god. As we hit the ghost. Should be able to get a pretty positive trade off here. Nice trade onto the Riven. Lethal Tempo. Jarvan trying to wrap around. And this is fine for us. Good hover there from the Graves. 
And I love Vayne, man. I really wish he'd come back in the meta. He's pretty solid as a counter pick into things like Samira Bot. But as it goes, mid lane, Vayne can be picked into things like Galio, but Silas maybe, but nothing too crazy in the meta. Is looking for a 2v2 here. Making them both back up. You can see this Griffith guy. Apparently, he was the first to start doing this Riftmaker. I saw the Why Not video. I asked him, hey, bro, where'd you get this build from? I looked it up. And Riftmaker actually has one of the highest win rates for Vayne at the moment. The problem is the play rate's pretty low. So when I see this video come out, I, I saw Dratoot play it as well. So maybe the win rate will start dropping as more people test it out. And obviously, you need to... To be honest, it's probably going to stay high because by the time you hit Riftmaker, you're already like four, three to four items on Vayne. And from there, you close your eyes and you just auto attack. And man, we're halfway through the world's group stage. How are you guys feeling? EU looking very strong. Korea, China looking pretty good. NA. I can't believe... I mean, I, let's be honest. I can believe it. What the hell are they doing though? They haven't won a single game. It's actually embarrassing if they don't win a single game. Probably something needs to happen over there at that region. Poor Riven trying to put up with this range top laner who has Ghost Flash. Looking at the gold. We're already up 500 gold. Hopefully looking to get some plates here as well. Look at the Jarvan. Carving through the river. We'll look for a top lane gank. We're going to respect it. Put a ward out. This is how you play Vayne top, guys. Please. It's slow. Don't try and play it too aggressive or too fast. As we potentially have caught the Jarvan. We do a little half roam. I wouldn't chase a Jarvan too fast. His wave looks good top side. Come on. Come on. We can start to put a little bit of bullying in. And I reckon something like a Jarvan is nice for Vayne to play into. He can actually cut it out. Dodge the QE. Can't dodge the ult, but it can maybe E him out so nobody can get in kind of thing. Such a weird kit. Not a weird kit, but it's kind of, it's not outdated. It, I mean, it's a bit outdated, man. Like, it's not that complex. Quite a simple kit, Vayne is. They want to try and hustle something. You can see this Griffith guy has really good spacing. So excited to see this late game mechanics turn on. And I'm trying to think, could you do this, this with any other champions other than Vayne? With that Rift Maker on an 80 carry that kind of converts. I think maybe Cogmore you could do it on, right? I've, I've, I think I've actually seen it maybe on like that tank Cogmore setup with Hurricane and stuff like that. The Hydra. So maybe it's a... Maybe it's more of a... Is it based off true damage? Hmm. As you see, he gets his team out here, guys. And this, of course... I'm helping you to get a little bit of wave clear. I'm going to move into a tankier. You you become very tanky with this build. Don't get it twisted. You're not you're not a squishy vein as you'll see into the mid game. Not only is this build going to get you tanky, but the wave clear is going to be so good that you'll be farming ten per minute every single game. Helps you to match a lot of these top laners. You can just shove you in and then roam. Quite annoying being a vein, being single target. It's hard to shove waves a lot of the times. As this whole team just dies. There we go. There we go. Played as well.
Looking at a 1,000 gold lead so far is the Yasuo. They're up 3,000. Sorry, 2,500 gold. We still get without a kill. Okay, Karma. I love it. Love it. Riven Tower at half. I wonder if this Riven ever just decides to want to go for an all-in. Like, you have to wait for the Vein E, maybe. Oh. And it's Permashove here. Permashove, get tower plates, be annoying as hell. If the enemy comes, just try and kite it out with the ghost, try and make an outplay. Should be pretty simple. You might be dying a little bit, but make sure you're getting 10 CS a minute. Putting out your flipping wards. I see a lot of you guys never warding. Cast it in, cast it in. Pike, pike, pike. Who are we going to find? Do we commit for the crab? Do we help the team? Crab commit. The crab commit, baby. He says, screw that. Back to the top side. Back to the farm fest. Okay. We've slowly hustled the top lane tower down to half. Graves picks up the herald, put it top. We're 130 CS at 13. This is the pace you need. There you go, baby. Hecarim. Sorry, Jarvan hovering topside. You can see he's stalling Jarvan a lot of time to free up the graves. Jarvan kind of keeps hovering top, but you're never going to be able to get a gank off on this vein setup. Not going to happen. Here we go. Here we go. Pops the ultimate. Ignite popped. And now you just want to space... Space it out. Auto, auto, auto. You still use, you have plenty of you have plenty of damage because you do true damage every third auto, guys. You don't need full damage on Vayne. You can see. You just need a little bit of good hands and no against melee picks. Don't stand on top of them. It's not that hard. We will be able to get the top lane tower for free here. Good hustle there for the graves. And I mean, 2,000 gold, and we haven't even started to turn on yet. 2.6k in the little piggy bank. Unless Riven tries to get a stop. I think we're going to be able to get it off. Titanic has been built, and now we're going to be on our way towards some attack speed. Get that Rage Blade on that on-hit setup. Of course, it's going to be the dying crits. You don't want crits, and you get extra damage. I want to see him just continuously take 1v1s on this old reset. 2.3k health, by the way. It looks so awkward. Look at the AoE. Look at that. Look at that AoE, guys. It doesn't look right. It looks a little bit silly. Comes through into the mid lane, eats all the farm up, and now he's so strong, he can actually just help out his team. He can rotate around the map if the Riven doesn't want to take the 1v1s. He can take this for himself. Looks so satisfying to play, actually. He roams down. Let's see if he can get anything here. It's just him and the Karma. As the Pike tries to make his way through. Vayne comes in, pops the ultimate, gets the Pike. Trying to kite it out now. Is he able to get anything? Kiting, kiting, kiting. He's so bloody beefy and not quite able to take them down. That wind wall is a little bit triggering. Oh, you auto grabs up the Yasuo for himself. Cast it in, thinking he might be able to turn something here. I doubt it. You got twenty three hundred gold in the bank, leaning up this game slowly. You can already like if you are in this state on a vein, as he finishes the cull, it's like make sure you're farming all the jungle camps with this type of wave clear as well, guys. We head back in. 
He knows he's, he knows he's going to be an absolute menace this game. Completes the Rage Blade. He'll complete his third item. Um, I've seen him do a couple of things. The Hurricane is usually the most favored. Hurricane into Rift Maker is just insanity. Okay? You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Of course, now you don't need that AD. You just need... The attack speed is going to be doing enough. I don't know what's going on. Is it like... It just looks bugged or something. Is it right? What the stat? What the stat check? The rage blade when it comes through. I'm 100, 420 extra damage to champions from the cleave. Okay, we're finally going to come through and maybe join in on a team fight. As Ghost pops the ultimate. Leaving the autos through. Look at the AoE he's doing here. Look at the AoE. Look at the AoE. He's coming through. Everybody is absolutely terrified of him. Gets the Gassadin. in. Holy shit. He just does so much. He finds the Cassidy and the Jarvan in the river. Cassidy and fail R. Thank you very much, good sir. They still do have Cassidy and Yasuo late, so it could be a little bit scary. You can see the Jarvan makes his way towards the Frozen Heart. Trying to reduce a little bit of attack speed. I think playing this with a Seraphine Karma, I think his team kind of knew he's picking this. This vein top and could play around it. Get some objective control set up. And man, we're almost at Rift Maker, lads. We're almost at Rift Maker. Wave clear is just stupid. Look at this. <laughs> I'd love to go on a low elo and play with this setup. It just looks so fun. Make our way towards the Leeching Leer. You get 5% Omni Vamp, 250 health, and 20 ability power. Um, does Vayne have any AP ratios? I don't think... It doesn't, right? You don't get anything from the AP. It was unfortunate. A nice little fight breaking out. With the AoE. He's making his way in. Gets CC'd. Not able to go in. Does have Flash. Flash is on top of the pike. Ghost still going. And you gotta remember, he's 3,000. 3,000 health. He has more health than any... He has more health than the Jarvan. He has Frostfire. Kindle Gem. Like, he's tanky as hell. Good luck. Chase the ribbon across the map. He's going to farm up for the Rift Maker. And I don't know. It's a pretty unique build. Definitely a unique build. <laughs> Cast it in. Okay, we're not going to go for it. 1800 gold. I think we have enough. I think we're full build, baby. Rift Maker. Rift Maker has been purchased, gentlemen. The Grant's passive bonus, he's getting 6% Omni Vamp. Plus 7% Omni Vamp, plus Ability Haste. For each second in combat with enemy champs, deal 3% bonus damage, up to max 9%. At max strength, the bonus damage is dealt as true damage instead. Plus Vayne true damage, plus Rage Blade, plus the Hydra... Hi hi on here... I don't know what's gonna... I don't know what we're about to see. Oh, 
All I want is the any, every single member except for the... I want Karma Seraphine to shield him and just let him go. Let him run. Let the boy run. He only has Ghost, no Flash, and so maybe it's a little bit too risky for him. Cool, Jarvan. I think they found the vein. Starting to stack up the Rift Maker. He has no Flash, remember, he's caged in. He's weaving as many autos as he can. Is he able to survive? Continuously goes down. He can't get anything done there, and his team actually gets white. Got a late game cast in, trying to make it work. Graves picks it up. And we weren't able to get any space in that fight. That is so unfortunate. He only got a couple autos off, but he got an extra 400 damage to champs there. This team's able to clean up. Come through into the next fight. And for your final item, I think it's situational. You could go into something like a wit's end, probably, with the on hit, right? My man is ready to go. You can see when he procs that Rift Maker. Turns a little bit purple. Looks dangerous. Who has the, who has the Anathema Chains on him? Who has the Anathema Chains? Garvin. Okay, here we go. Stack it up. We're stacked. Garvin ult comes in again. Come on, let us out of the cage. Let us out of the cage. Auto's coming through. We're just not able to get the team fight I'm looking for, big dog. He's just gonna farm every single thing. You can see the Cassidy wants him. Cassidy moves in. Auto, auto. Riven. Come on. Come on, boys. Start the lawnmower. Cass goes in, weaving the autos. Rift Makers fully stacked. I think they're gonna try and back off. Bane doesn't want to though, he wants to go for the end. This team's not gonna let him. And it's gonna be a dragon set up for the soul. Unfortunate. And let me know in the comments down below what do you think of this build. Like, I know some people have been memeing it and saying it's a for fun build. Maybe the standard is higher win rate. I don't know. Looks to me like a little bit of fun and you can catch teams by surprise. Sorry, that's Cloud Soul setup. Almost has the ghost. The wind wall dodging. Has the ultimate. Weaving autos through now. Tries to get the target focus. Flashes forward. Gets the Riven, all eyes on the Jarvan. And we should be able to just run straight through for the end. Down mid. What a weird, wacky build. 1400, 1400 extra damage to champions from the Rift Maker, but I feel like we didn't really get to see the proper pop-offs that we were looking for. Um, but hopefully you guys are able to get them in your own games, boys. Rift Maker, Lawn, Moa, Great, uh, Vayne, I don't know what's going on. Looks like fun. Hopefully you guys don't eat too many solo queue players. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.